Hi, Ty Holloway here with Holloway Bros Fishing. Today we're tying one of our favorite nymphs, uh, the Mega Prince. We use this in the spring quite a bit, higher water, underneath indicators, uh, as a dry dropper. Today I'm tying it on a, a jig hook, the Arex 550, FW 550. In the jig hook, we use it often underneath an indicator and tie it in smaller sizes, uh, 10s and 8s. We also tie it in 6s quite a bit on standard curved hooks like a, a Arex FW560 or a Daiichi 1760. But uh, we, we use these all the time. They're one of our favorite nymphs. It's uh, imitating more or less a stonefly but just a, a, a leggy, buggy fly that we catch a lot of nice trout on uh, throughout the season. Alrighty, a uh, jigged Mega Prince today. We've got a number 8 FW550 A-Rex hook, a uh, jig hook, and then a, a 532nd tungsten bead on there. We're going to leave our bead right there. We're not going to move it forward quite yet. Start our thread. Here we're trying to kind of keep as little uh, as little bulk as possible in our thread. We're going to advance that bead forward and if we have too much bulk up here it's not going to allow our bead to slide as far forward as we would like. We're going to have some legs coming out of the front of the bead here. So we're going to tie them in. One side coming off one side of the hook and off the other just like that take some peacock ice stub here and just enough of Just enough dub here to make kind of a little, uh, a little bump to keep that bead from going all the way to the eye. Just like that. I really want to bind that that remaining excess of rubber leg down so our bead can slide over it. We'll trim our, trim our legs to length there. Right about there. Now we're going to whip finish this so we can bring our, bring our bead forward. thread. Now we're really trying to bring our bead as far as far forward as it will allow. Just like that. And that's snugged up there nice and tight. Now we can we're gonna start our thread again. little thread base there. We're going to put about five turns of some uh, .020 lead in here. You can do this uh, just depending on uh, your application. You can either have a regular brass bead in here or a, or a tungsten bead. Um, but either way I like the uh, I like the lead just to add, uh, add a little bit of mass to the body. Um, this the Mega Prince as it imitates, uh, kind of depending on what size you're tying it in, it's mainly a, a stonefly nymph imitation, but really imitating kind of any, any insect, any nymph that's going to be in the water, depending on the size you tie it in. We're going to bring our thread 
quite a ways down the hook shank here. Right about there. I'm going to tie in our uh, small copper wire. Bring our thread back up the hook shank. Now we're going to wrap this copper wire forward, having each wrap be tight to. Uh, tight to the previous wrap. This is just a little tag end of uh, copper wire. And just an aesthetic value here. Every every mega prints that I've seen tied has this uh, has this step in it so we figured we'd include it as well. Now the tail is going to be this is just the tail of a, of a hen chicken here. So you got your uh, you got your full hand skin, and it's just the tail feathers here that are kind of just little pieces of marabou, basically. But I'm going to use uh, get that focused. I'm going to use two of them. I like I like the uh, I like just the amount of mass. Uh, that two feathers give you here. So I've trimmed away the trimmed away the fluff down there at the bottom, and I put these two together. Just like that. I'm gonna wet them a little bit just to make them easier to work with. Tight in there. Right on top, just like that. I'm going to leave that for now, uh, just because I want to kind of use the feather there to build bulk in my body or build the taper. I'm going to add some more rubber legs here. These are the barred crazy legs in uh, olive and green flake. I'm going to use these same color rubber legs throughout the throughout the fly. So kind of same thing as we did with the uh, the head of the fly there. We're going to start our rubber legs on one side. And bring them back to the other side. Just like that there. Now for our peacock curl for the body, I'm going to take about uh, seven strands of, of peacock curl, six or seven or eight or so. I'm going to get kind of the, the tips relatively even here. I'm going to trim them off, make them real even. Gonna tie them in by the tips. Just like that. Now we're gonna advance our thread forward. I'm gonna leave that uh, leave the chickaboo kind of feather in there and trim that off just about where the uh, where I left uh, the thread or where the uh, lead started. And that's kind of making a nice even sized body there. We're gonna advance this uh, Peacock curl all the way forward to the bead. I'm going to use my hackle pliers here. Twist this up into a nice rope.
and all the way forward to the bead. Just like that. Secure that, tie it off. That's our body. We're going to use our wire. Wrap this forward, re reinforcing that peacock curl, just like five or six turns or so. Tie that in. One more set of rubber legs here. It's going to be kind of our uh, an underwing, more or less. Have those double over and come back. And if one of them's standing up like that, it's all right. Our our uh, collar here is going to lay that back. So now, from the same uh, from the same skin that we grabbed our tail from, this is just the uh, hen hen skin. I'm going to grab a feather from uh, the uh, the neck here, and and one of the smaller ones. We're trying to this this fly being the size size eight we kind of just want uh, want that collar coming back to the hook point there so a smaller feather is going to be needed so we're going to prepare this feather just by pulling away all the fluff there and all we've got left is just the, uh, the nice tip of the feather there We're going to tie it in by the tip. So I'm going to pull everything back, leaving just a little tag end up there. To uh, that's our tie-in point right there. So tight our tight our collar in there, just by the by the tip of that feather. I'm going to do a little scissor fold here. So I'm running my scissor up the stem of the feather, folding those fibers back. So when I wrap it here, when I palmer it, they're going to lay flat and go back in the direction we want along the fly, along the body of the fly. Really, we only need one full turn here for our collar, just like that. Going to secure that. Cut off our stem. That looks good there. Now for our uh, stripped uh, white stripped goose by out here. So we're going to take two white goose biots, kind of cup of that feather down. We're going to tie it in right on top, having it go, having it extend back just about as far as the, uh, as far as the collar there. Just like that, a couple securing wraps. I like pulling the uh, pulling the tag end of the biot back there and doing a few wraps on top of that, just to give it an extra security. We really like those biots staying in there. That's a an effective part of the fly. I'm gonna trim the tags there. Now for our final step. Just a little bit more peacock eye stub. 
real thin rope here. This is just kind of enough to cover up all that thread we used to secure our collar and those goose biots. Finish there. There we have it. That is our me jig mega prints. There it was. That was the mega prints, one of our favorite stonefly nymphs, and a fly that we have a lot of confidence in and use all season long. We keep it in a variety of uh, sizes and hook styles and always have confidence when we tie it on. It's got a lot of nice trout and here in the Willamette Valley and anywhere in the west where there are stonefly nymphs it will work well. Thanks for watching, subscribe to Holloway Bros and stay in touch.